Okay, wait, wait. I'll just tell you what I did. See what I what I just said that uh, we have uh, discussed so far the three different steps. Okay, ores concentration and then uh, conversion of concentrated ore into its oxide and then reduction. Okay, last method we have the purification of these uh, metal, right? Because the metal that we get is not pure. So we'll pure for purification. The method which we use here is electro refining. Okay. So electro refining is a technique that we use, and it is used for the purification of copper, zinc. There are many different metals we use for this purpose, right? Right on so this method. This method. is used for the purification of purification of copper zinc tin silver gold nickel lead and aluminium for all these uh, you know metals we use electro refining process like i said it is based on the concept of electrochemistry so obviously we have an electric cathode and an anode here right so we use cathode for this purpose the cathode metal is made up of made up of thin strip of impure metal now one thing you take care of here we'll take cathode as an as an impure metal impure metal of what the metal to which is to be refined right suppose the metal which we have to refine we'll take the impure metal of that as a cathode right anode we use here it is a large slab large slab of impure metal impure metal again we use the same metal which is to be refined so basically cathode and anode both we have same metal impure metal we have here right cathode is a thin strip and anode is a large slab comparatively right the electrolyte because obviously the process is related to the electro um, uh, refining so we also use some electrolyte in this process so electrolyte is what it is the aqueous solution of aqueous solution of suitable salt of the same metal of the same metal So you see here Okay draw this
this is the arrangement we have electrolyte is this Okay, this is the large slab here. It's pure metal only. What I said, these two cathode and anode made up of the metal that we have here, which is to be refined. Oh, you are saying it is a pure metal that we use here. Just a minute. Just a second. You copy it down. I'll tell you. Oh yeah, it's pure. I have written it wrong by mistake. It's pure. Correct. That's what you were saying, Dhruv. Right? It's pure. Yeah, Dhruv. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Correct. By mistake. Okay. so cathode is made up of pure metal which is to be refined okay uh, yeah in that case both will be uh, same no if it is also impure impure both yeah fine fine right so cathode is made up of uh, pure metal thin strip right this is the large slab so this one is this one is cathode thin strip pure metal anode is large slab right and it is impure metal okay this is the overall process we have we, we obviously connect this right the arrangement we have total arrangement here so reaction at cathode is what if i write down the reaction we all know suppose the metal is m we have so at cathode reduction takes place i'll write down the general expression here mn plus plus n electron gives m right and at anode the reaction will be i'll write down this side first of all you copy down this i'll go to the next page done yeah so the reaction of anode here the anode we have two reactions takes place the first reaction at anode obviously the oxidation of metal m to mn plus sorry m to mn plus plus an electron and the second reaction is the impurities x n plus half of x2 plus n electrons oh just a second it should be like this half of x2 and this half of x2 gives x n plus plus electron this is the impurity so this reaction is uh we don't want this reaction to takes place this is unwanted reaction and this one is wanted reaction we want this reaction to takes place because metal we need to uh right uh, get this is unwanted reaction okay so here what happens the anionic part of the electrolyte this is the anionic part of the electrolyte the anionic part of the electrolyte is to be chosen i think there is again acha wait write down pehle 
uh, and any part of the electrolyte is to be chosen as in such a way in such a way that anodic reaction that anodic reaction to does not take place right so this is reaction 1 and this is reaction 2 we won't want, we won't we don't want this reaction to take place and hence will will take an anionic part in such a way that this reaction won't take place and for that if you remember we have discussed this the over potential concept in electrochemistry right so depending on those values over potential electrode potential and all will choose the anionic part i made a mistake again here i'm sorry this should be let me write down this anionic part no so it should be x n minus it is x n minus and half of x2 now it's fine charge is balance oxidation also takes place okay n minus 2 half x that's why it's anionic part okay so what happens here this second reaction does not take place that's what the our concern is so we'll choose this anionic part in such a way that by any means whether it is over potential or electrode potential because we know the metal the one which has more oxidation potential sorry more reduction potential will get reduced if you remember the two metal if you have the more the one which has more reduction potential will get reduced the one which has low reduction potential which get oxidized the one which has more oxidation potential will get oxidized the one which has low oxidation potential will get reduced if you remember this we have discussed this in electrochemistry that whatever more whether it is reduction potential or oxidation potential whatever more is there that will take place for that particular metal right so this reaction is unwanted so anionic part since it is getting oxidized so oxidation potential of anionic part must be lesser than the oxidation potential of this metal that is the conclusion here we have so the oxidation potential of the anionic part of electrolyte must be less than the oxidation potential of metal is it clear understood this is it clear done all of you tell me okay now one thing you see at anode this oxidation takes place an anode is made up of impure metal if you see right so from impure metal this is anode reaction so impure metal converts into mn plus okay and mn plus get reduced at cathode so cathode is made up of pure metal right so from the impure metal anode the metal ion is coming into the solution and which is getting deposited onto the cathode that's how we get the pure metal in this got it right so the anode which is impure see the the diagram you see in the last page anode it is impure so from this anode first reaction takes place will get mn plus the metal ion and this metal ion get oxidized at cathode so reduce at cathode and converts into m solid that's how we get pure metal in this process okay condition is what whatever electrolyte will choose the anionic part the oxidation potential of anionic part must be lesser than the oxidation potential of the metal right so if you if you think this reverse what happens if the oxidation potential of metal is lesser than the oxidation potential of the anionic part of the electrolyte okay so write down this point if the oxidation potential 
if the oxidation potential of the metallic impurities is low sorry of the metallic impurities is lower than the oxidation potential of metallic impurities is lower than the oxidation potential of the anionic part of the electrolyte is lower than the anionic part of the electrolyte then the metal gets separated in the form of anode mud metal gets separated in the form of anode mud this anode mud also they ask sometimes you'll see this question in the book okay anode mud what is anode mud it is the it is the metal which gets separated in the form of it is basically a slag okay in the form of a slag or impurities when the oxidation potential of metal is lower than the oxidation potential of anionic part of the electrolyte got it did you get it done all of you okay yeah so this is the extraction process we have we have discussed all the four uh, methods steps which involves for the extraction of various different metals okay now we'll have uh, all these metals like silver copper iron and how do we extract these metals by using the different different uh, processes that we'll see one by one okay but before going into that i'll just want to discuss first the alingam diagram okay alingam diagram you know have you done it alingam diagram 